This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good morning and aloha, everybody. My name is Mark Schwab, and I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. And today, we have my old friend, Alan W.C. Ma, as my guest. The world is a stage, and lawyers play many parts on that stage. And today, we're going to ask Alan a little bit about the parts that he has played in crossing the sea and in life. He, his main focus is immigration law. However, he's been involved in the entertainment business, both as an actor and a writer. And we're going to explore his background, and what he has achieved and what he's done and what he sees in the law and in life. Aloha, Alan. Good, good to Aloha. see you. Good to see you today. Well, thank you for inviting me. My pleasure. It's been, uh, we've had a, a long relationship, and it's good, good to see you here, be finally, in, yeah. in Law Across the Sea. But tell me, let's start out. Tell me a little bit about your background, please. What, what, where are you from? What, what, how did you get to Hawaii? Well, I'm a native of uh, Hong Kong. I was born and raised uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, I always confuse people by telling them that I'm a first-generation immigrant from a second-generation mother. <laughs> and do you know what it means? I, I, I'm waiting to hear this. Right. I'm confused now. What it means is that uh, my mother was born and raised in Hawaii. And uh, like a century ago, a lot of Chinese as well as the Japanese people descended children, those born in Hawaii, and back to the native countries for education. And my mom was sent back to China to study at age 13. And she subsequently and, and stayed back because she married to my father. And uh, eventually, she moved to Hong Kong. That's and how I was born in Hong Kong. I see. And, and so you were born in Hong Kong. Your, your mother went from Hawaii to where in China? Well, originally, she went back to Zhongshan. And it's most of the uh, Chinese in Hawaii their ancestors uh, were from Chungshan, and that's where my, uh, actually both my parents, you know, were from. I see, and where is that near? For that's a small area and very close by Macau, okay. and somewhere between Macau and, and uh, Guangzhou. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, so going to Hong Kong was close by also? For, yes, for, and for because of uh, the invasion of the, by the Japanese, and the family moved to Hong Kong, and so I was born in Hong Kong. Okay. And, and what happened? What happened in Hong Kong to you? What, what was your life like there, and how did, how did things progress that ultimately your second-generation mother said, hey, let's go back to Hawaii, I, I guess. I'm guessing. Right. <laughs> uh, I'm the, the, the youngest of eight children, wow. and uh, our parents wanted to send the children back to the U.S. one by one. And when we became independent, so I was the last one then to be sent from uh, Hong Kong to uh, Hawaii. My mom was born as an American citizen, so she always had the right to petition the children to come to the U.S. as okay. immigrants. Okay, so that's a great question, especially nowadays. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so your, your, your mother was born here in Hawaii, and because of that, she's an American citizen. That's correct. And so she has the right to bring her children in or to, to petition the government as, as citizens of the United States. Is that right? It, it, That's correct. The law is still the same. Okay. All the right. The law is still the same. So when did you come to Hawaii, and how, what was that like, and, and what, what did you do? Uh, I came to Hawaii when I was uh, about 17, 18, uh, closer to 18. And then I kind of uh, finished the last year of high school here. and. Uh, then I subsequently went on to the University of Hawaii and then Shamana for my MBA, and then I went on to uh, law school in San Francisco. Okay, now I, I want to just go back to Hong Kong for a minute. Mm -hmm. okay. You left Hong Kong about 17 years old. Mm -hmm. Okay. You'd been educated in Hong Kong. What, what were you doing in Hong Kong? What, what was your life like as a young, young person in Hong Kong with a, American mother, and I, I guess, a, a, I mean, a, a Chinese father, citizenship-wise. I, I think that's correct. 
What, what was your life like in Hong Kong? I would say pretty much like a normal kid. But in my case, I was uh, fortunate that my father had a very good friend who was the director of a television show. And uh, I was hired as a child actor. And subsequently, I worked in various television programs for about four years until the very last week before I flew to Hawaii. Okay, so that kind of gives us a background of how you got involved in the entertainment business. Uh, I kind of, uh, even thinking back to those days, I worked in all this uh, television program. I was in commercials, and uh, I had my share of fun growing up. And in those days, having television was already a big deal, but working in television program was even a bigger deal. Yeah, and, and in Hong Kong, I, 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 you know, I don't know this, which language are we talking? Are we talking talking English? Are we talking Chinese or both or all of the above? In, well, in, in your commercials, in your commercials or in TV, how, how does that work? It's always in Cantonese and Hong Kong, all the people in Hong Kong basically they speak Cantonese. Um, although Hong Kong before 1997, it was a British colony. So, and we had English courses but once you go home, you speak Cantonese, so it is very much, uh, you know, we live in a, a Cantonese-speaking society, and using English was rather limited. So even the, the entertainment business was in Cantonese, uh, is that right? Well, in those programs that I worked in, mm -hmm. on, uh, of course, the television stations, they had also English programs, mm -hmm. but I worked mainly in those Cantonese programs. And those were geared towards Hong Kong locals. That's that, correct. That be right? Okay. That's right. All right, so you, you got here to Hawaii, and uh, you, your, your parents wanted to send you out to learn to, I guess, be independent and, and to get an education in the United States and, and come to the United States. Was there an idea that you were going to go back? or? Was this, I mean, were you, are we, were you just going to be into the United States for, for, for the rest of your life? What, what, what was the plan, or was there a plan? Well, looking at my other or older siblings, and everyone just uh, settled down in the U.S., so of course uh, my plan then was just to settle in the U.S., but uh, at that time, of course, when I first came over, not knowing my own ability and uh, what could I do, and um, so I just continued to go to school, and I didn't have any plan like to become whatever professionals or, or, or anything like that at that time. You were a good son. You just went to school all the time. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> okay, but, but how did it come about then, that the law? How did, how did you get involved in the law, and what, how did that get, get started, and what, what did you do to, to get your degree and become a practicing attorney? Well, being an immigrant, and I, and, and of course, I also uh, speak uh, uh, three different dialects of Chinese, and I was very involved in the Chinese community. And uh, I saw a lot of people, they really needed help, mm -hmm. and they couldn't command English, and they didn't understand American law, and often because of their ignorance, and they put themselves in difficult positions. So that kind of uh, motivated me to become a lawyer, to be able to help some of those people in the immigrant community. And you saw these problems as, as you were growing up here in Hawaii after you arrived? Basically. That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and that kind of inspired you, is what I'm hearing, to, to look towards the law or look to a way to help, help people. That's right? correct. So, okay. So what, what happened next in, in your, your, your life? You went, you went to law school and, mm -hmm. and, and you, you were here in Hawaii but you went away to law school. Right. Well, I was very fortunate. I was uh, uh, awarded this uh, national scholarship called CLIO. Essentially, Congress, and at least in those days, they select about 250 uh, students nationwide to receive scholarship to have a special uh, assistant for them to go to law school. But those uh, scholarship recipients must commit to going back to their, to, their, to, their, to their own state. In my case, I came back to Hawaii in part because I received the scholarship, and my commitment was to help the people in Hawaii. 
And so after I concluded my legal education, I came back to Hawaii to work. A scholarship sounds like a, a pretty good deal, pretty good idea. Is it still going on? Do they? I believe it is. Okay. And I believe uh, the, the program is still going on. Okay. So, all right. So you, 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 you got the scholarship. You finished law school. Then what, what happened in, in your career? Or where, where did you, you know, you, you, you had this feeling about the immigration law. Where did that take you? Uh, of course, when I started looking for jobs and I knock on doors off, you know, at that time and uh, all the prominent immigration law firms or lawyers, and uh, I came across my then uh, employer who became my mentor and subsequently my law partner, Mr. Ronald Odenberg. Mm -hmm. So I started working for him as an associate and uh, after a few years, then we became law partners. And uh, so I focus since the first day I started my law practice in immigration law. And is that all you do, or is there anything else you do presently or through, through your background as a lawyer? Is that basically your focus is still is continuing yes. to be immigration law? Immigration practice is very complex. I guess that even for some other lawyers, they don't quite understand what immigration law is about. Uh, immigration law is intertwined with other areas of law. Hmm. And for example, yeah. Business law, labor law, family law, even criminal law and tax law. While as, immigra as an immigration lawyer, I'm no expert in these other areas of law, and, but I often have to work with lawyers of these other disciplines in order to serve my immigrant client's right. And additionally, because of my uh, uh, business, okay, training, and uh, currently my work is more focused in the business immigration practice than other area of law. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you mentioned Ron Oldenburg, right? right? And I, I, I heard of him when I started out too. Pretty well known fellow in the immigration area. And what, what was your experience with him? What, what was that like? He, he was your mentor. Is that, is that right? Well, absolutely, and uh, when I uh, started working for him, he very unselfishly and shared with me his uh, work experience, and particularly some of the things that, you know, as a lawyer you can appreciate, uh, legal tactics, mm. okay, strategies. That sort of things is not something you can learn from law school. Not a, it's not in the books. Not in the books. So he was very kind to uh, share those with me. But I really learned far more when Ron and I, and also, and with the then very famous immigration lawyer, Mr. Buzz Thompson, right. and we had a so-called a breakfast club, and for a <laughs> long time, we meet every Thursday just to chat and to learn from each other, you know, immigration law. We learned a great deal from each other. We were also, you know, and uh, passionate in this area of law practice. So we, we really want to be good at it. Yeah. So that's, that was sort of like an informal uh, um, CLE, uh, legal education, uh, that you would take up every thir group. Thursday with your, with, with your buddies in the same area of right. law. Right. And, and I know that as you went through this, you had many interesting cases. And after the break, I want to ask you to tell us about what you can about some of your interesting cases, okay? Certainly. All right. All Thank right. you. Thank you very much. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. My friend, Mother, what big eyes you have. She said, all the better to see you with, my dear. What are you doing? Okay, cool. Research says reading from birth accelerates the baby's brain development. And you're doing that now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Ah. this is the starting line. Push. Ah. Ah. When this is over, you're dead. Read aloud 15 minutes. Every child, every parent, every day. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to navigate the journey. Spend the time with us as we look through and discover 
all of the ins and outs of this journey through life. We're on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. And I would love to have you with us. Come navigate the journey. Aloha. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii Law Across the Sea. My name is Mark Shklov, the host of uh, Law Across the Sea. I'm here with my friend Alan W.C. Ma, and we're talking about his uh, life on the stage of attorney, being an attorney in Hawaii, and uh, the immigration law. And in that life, on that stage as an attorney, uh, you come up with many different scenes. And I would like to ask him about some of those scenes and some of those plays that he's been in and the interesting ones. So, Alan, tell us what you can about some of the interesting cases that you've had over the years. Oh, certainly. Uh, in the course of the last 33 years of my practice, I, I look at my record, I must have uh, uh, worked on about 10,000 okay, cases or provided advice and, and consultation. But several really stood out. And, and, you know, it's always in my mind, and I also have, like, uh, uh, fiction and written based on my experience in those bigger cases. So, so you're, you're, you've taken the reality and created something from it based on what happened. That's right. And uh, as a new lawyer, I believe the, one of the biggest cases I was involved, not, of course, I was relatively... Uh, inexperienced and young, and I was a member in the team to work uh, in a Marcos family case. Okay. And when uh, Marcos and uh, uh, Ferdinand, President Ferdinand Marcos and uh, his wife and children came to Hawaii in 1986, uh, I was one of the first few lawyers to have met them, to talk to them, and eventually helped Mr. Odenberg to work on this case. Now, in the process, we learn a lot, not so much about the immigration law, but learn a lot about the political history of the Philippines, the geopolitical issues in that region of the world, and you open up your eyes by dealing with people of that caliber, and you learn about their lives, you learn about what they do, you learn about whether or not all the media's report on these people real or not real. So to me, that is one of the bigger cases that stands out, okay, and in my work experience. The other one was uh, helping this Chinese who uh, migrated to Nicaragua, and in an interesting situation, he helped, he saved the life of the commander-in-chief of the Nicaraguan government. And coincidentally, and preceding that, his uncle saved the life of the president of Nicaragua. So I successfully helped him to have apply for political asylum in a, in a deportation a case. And that was very dramatic in the trial and very memorable. And to me, uh, it was a very interesting experience, again, in this process, I learn about, you know, and uh, Central America. I learn about, you know, the, the culture, the political history of the country, and so forth. I had also worked on a case, and that was pretty significant. Uh, I also defended successfully an alleged Yakuza, or the mafia in Japan. Alleged, alleged. Alleged. Yes and who had filed the second largest bankruptcy case ever in Japan's history, with about 2.3 trillion yen of total debt. Mm. And in that case, uh, he was alleged to have violated immigration law for, you know, and committed, for having committed, you know, and visa fraud. And again, I, I successfully and uh, defended in that case and the other one was also very interesting was that I uh, helped Mr. O uh, Ronald Oldenburg. We surrender a German soldier who was hiding in Hawaii in the 1980s 
And after four, 45 years after World War II, it's very difficult to, for people to believe that we still have a German soldier. You know, after he escaped from the uh, war prison camp, and uh, he was hiding in Hawaii 45 years after World War II. So he made his way here. Yes, he... Somehow, and was uh, trying to stay out of the limelight, but something made him come forward. Well, actually, he had no choice. At the time, we had a very tough uh, immigration district director, and he was, the, the Mr. Sam Feldman was the first and only district director invoked a special power to use the Hawaiian National Guard to go to different places, including Maui, to round up so-called illegal aliens. So he was not noticed by the U.S. authorities, but he decided to come forward. That was the prudent thing to do. Right. And I did substantial research on, you know, and the, the, the war crimes law and all those, and make sure that he would come out clean and before we made arrangement for him to surrender to U.S. authorities. Uh, we also notified the German uh, embassy to let them know that they, they had a, a German soldier hiding in Hawaii. Hmm. So all of these things uh, are actually very topical. Uh, you know, uh, the Philippines, we're still seeing things nowadays that are going on in the Philippines that some people hearken back to Marcos days and South America is having some problems. Germany just had an election where it looks like maybe there's right wing uh, government uh, forces coming in, not, not major, but it, 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 perhaps a start. What have you learned from all these people? What have you learned? What have you learned? What, what is going on here in our society? Because I can tell your experiences go beyond, beyond lawyering. Well, again, this is the most interesting part of being an immigration law practitioner. Immigration law, um, uh, for mo to, to most uh, you know, immigration lawyers, it, it's not pure immigration law practice. You often get into uh, the, again, political history and the culture of other countries. When we try to represent a client from a different country, you don't learn so much just that particular client, his background, his uh, 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 political inclination. You learn so much about his country. You learn so much about the uh, political issues, not just in that country, but also around the world. So it really broadened, you know, your views of the world, okay? This is a part of the immigration practice. And of course, immigration practice also is complex in uh, dealing with other things, okay? Like, for example, like a lot of people know me as an EB-5 lawyer because I have been doing EB-5 works since the law, you know, and uh, uh, passed in 1990. And, the, and that's an investment encouragement type of law. That's correct. And because of the, uh, the practice of that law, and I had a contract to represent the state of Hawaii to set up an office in Hong Kong to promote Hawaii as an investment location. So again, the practice of the law would bring me not not to let me learn about different culture, different you know, and political the histories of different places. You actually travel, mm -hmm. okay, and you actually go to different places. And today, I mean, you know, I still go to, I mean, to take like overseas trip no less than three, four times a year because of the work that I do. Okay, now as you've seen all these people, you've seen. Uh, the problems that they have in immigration and politics play a lot, a big part in, in a lot of this. Today we know that. Alan, has anything changed? Has anything changed over the years? Or do we, are we just going to continue to repeat ourselves 
with these problems, with fear of foreigners and with uh, immigration issues? Is it just going to continue? Has anything changed or progressed? I think the world is progressing in that because of the uh, uh, electronic medium is bringing people together. Mm. And we have, unfortunately, political leaders who may have different ideologies, may have different view about people from certain places, may have different ideas how the law should be enforced. And uh, if you look at history, and immigration law is a branch of public interest law. How our government policies changes would affect not just thousands, perhaps millions of people. And it really depends on our political leaders, not just the president, but also the people in the Congress, how they would look at this world, how they would look at the Americans integrate into this world, and to make this place, to make this whole world more peaceful. So, you know, and people could live together, not in one country, but in the entire world. And I think a lot of it has to be with getting to know people. That's and, correct. And, and getting to know their background, and maybe that's what you do in immigration law. Now, you get paid for being an immigration attorney, right? What are the, what are the benefits beyond money to you as an immigration attorney in your practice? What have you found? Well, I think the most rewarding is really uh, the understanding of the immigration practice is really um, humanistic. We have people because the work that, for example, I did, I literally have saved their lives. They remember me forever. <laughs> I received Christmas cards and like, you know, from clients from 25 years ago because of what I did. And I think that and uh, my law practice doesn't just give me, you know, financial and reward, but it brings me satisfaction. And because I saved people's lives, I help a lot of people who often are desperate, poor, and they feel helpless. When you at that moment and give, you know, these people your, your, your hand, and they will remember you forever. And I have a lot of good friends today, and they're all my former clients. To me, this is the biggest, you know, and reward in my practice. Not so much money I could make and from, 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 from being an attorney doing immigration law. Well, Alan, I, I appreciate that. And it sounds to me like uh, being an immigration attorney is, is, a, is a big stage. And you've played many roles. And they've all been satisfactory. And maybe some of those plays will continue in the future. I certainly hope so. And, and thank you very much for being my guest today. Oh, thank you. Aloha. Aloha.